What's up guys, Barry Michael Doyle here again, and in this video, we're carrying on our building a YouTube search app with React Native. This is the second part of the series, and I'll leave a link to the previous video in the description below. Now, what we've got so far is a header component, and that's pretty much it. So our app at the moment is pretty disappointing, but we'll get there step by step. Now, okay, it's not 3 a.m., I promise you. This is just my emulator saying that it's 3 a.m., uh basically the next thing that we'd like to implement if we remember from our blueprint is our search bar and as you can see i've made this much bigger so you can actually see things properly now now in order to do this we're going to want to implement our search bar so let's just make some space to actually implement that fortunately i haven't forgotten anything so we can actually just dive straight into it now the first thing we want to do is wrap our search bar in a view component so we just simply type that and our search bar details are going to go in here. Now, if you can remember from our demo in the previous video, our search bar is going to have that text input and a button. Now we haven't got text input imported yet. So we've got to import that from React Native and we import it from React Native like this, just straight up type text input. And now we can implement a text input here. And we also want to import a button. And in order to do that, we need to get button from React Native Elements. Now, if you remember from the previous video, we got React Native Elements. We got our header from there. And we actually ended up on the button page in those docs I left in the description. So I'm going to leave those docs again and link to those docs in the description below for this video as well, just in case you want to check it out. But basically, we want to implement this button. And now we have these two things sitting here. And I can promise you it's going to look pretty pointless because there's going to be a text input just randomly there but no sort of styling to it and a button just randomly there and no style to it so before I demonstrate it to you let's actually add some things to this because if I demonstrate it to you now it's going to look a bit pointless so first of all let's look into our button our button is going to want to have some text in it and the attribute that we change for this is the title and we want to make the say search because when I'll it's our search button. That's what it's meant to do. Um, we can also add an on press thing to it, attribute. And we can say that is equal to, we make it a function that calls console.log um, the button was pressed. There we go. Nice and simple. So this means that when the button is pressed, this will print to the console. Well, this will print to the console. And the console, you can you can find that in your expo XDE, which is over here. This area over here is your console. So those prop types, that's a bug that will be removed. Previously, the React components used prop types, and now that's been separated to a separate package. Now, some of the packages that we import, they still make use of prop types. But in future updates, they should be sorted out. So you don't have to stress about that warning. Now, the console logs will appear here. These are all actually console logs themselves but we can put our own personal ones in there, which is what we've been focusing on. So that occurs. And then our text input, well, let me just show you what it's gonna look like if we run this application now. Right, so here we are at our emulator and you can see we have our search button just chilling there. And we also have our text input, that little line there, if you can see that. It's sort of hiding under the status bar, so you can't really use it. Now, the thing is with this header, it doesn't really count as a component, it's just there. So what we need to do is actually make a margin above our search component in our view to make sure that it actually pulls down to here. And the other thing I wanted to do was add some styles to our button to make sure it's, it's smaller and it appears on the side here and we have the text input here. So what we're gonna do to accomplish this is we are going to add some styles to our amazing little button and text input and the view as well, the container view. Now, what we're basically going to do is we're going to give each one of these a style tag. So as you can see there, oops, can't spell style, style. And that equals, and we want to make something called, so we're going to have a styles object that I'm going to make soon. So don't stress if you don't know what's going on, you'll figure it out soon enough. And uh, this styles 
object is going to be it's going to contain container style oops messed up my typing again so we're going to have a star styles dot container style and then our textbook input as well let's just put this on a new line because we're going to add a few things to it later we're going to add a style attribute to this as well and we're going to say styles dot search text style because that's the other property we're going to change and now the button because this is from react native elements it's got its own special style property called button style or should i say attribute and this is going to be styles dot button style now the way i'm going to work this out is i'm going to add a styles object over here and that's going to equal these various things which we've had yet so we're going to have container style Oh, can't even spell container. What's wrong with me today? And separate it with a comma, and we're going to have a search text style. Again, my keyboard is acting funny today. And we're also going to have a button style. Now, whatever goes in here are going to be our styles, and they're going to be applied. See, button style here is applied to that. Search textiles applied to that and container style applied to that over there. So pretty straightforward. Um, one thing if you might notice here, you've got the styles.container style, style.search textile, styles.button styles, which remember I had that react.component thing there. I really didn't like that. So we're going to simplify this a bit and we're going to make a variable up here, a constant, which is going to be taking container style and search text style and button style now this is kind of getting a bit big so i'm going to split these up over a couple of lines and we're going to make them we're going to take these from the object styles and sorry it's taking us time again so there's styles and this styles is that styles over there it's referring to that so this means we can remove these and they will work ESLint hasn't pulled any issues so now we know that will work now the problem is that we have now is that these styles are empty so they don't actually do anything oh I forgot my semicolon there thank you ESLint once more now what we want to do to add to these is first of all there was that margin top I've worked it out to be about 75 that we need to put at the top and then I also want to make a margin left of 10 and a margin right of 10 because it's nice to have stuff not sag right on the edges of the screen and have a bit of space there. Now the other thing I want for this container is a property called flex. No, not flex, it's flex direction. The other ones will have flex. And I'm going to make this row. So by default the flex direction is like a column. So example, the flex we use here, this makes it cover the whole screen vertically. Now flex direction row means that everything in this view, because this is container style that we're working with, everything in this view, when we add flex properties to it, they're going to flex horizontally in the row direction. So the way that's going to work is we're going to add a flex property of one to the search textile. So this means it's going to take the whole screen width but remember because we have the flex direction row it takes it all to the side here but then there's still going to be space so this text will go across the screen but because it's a row it will still leave space for the button now the button it's got a default width which is kind of fine so we don't have to set a style for that but i have worked out that the button it's nice to have a height of 30 because the default height is a bit much and I've worked out as well a margin bottom, oop, margin button, margin bottom of eight will suffice quite nicely. So this is going to present us with a much nicer looking style thing going. So let's check it out now. Right, so here we have it. It's looking much nicer, just like we did in my demo project that I made earlier. It's got the text input here and the search functionality. So you can even type stuff in here, and it does its thing. It tells you that things are spelled wrong. But uh, 
yeah, that's our text input. Now also take note, if we click search, this little thing in the console appears, the button was pressed. Oops, there goes my screen. Now that's because over here we had an on press, we wanted a function to call with no parameters in the function. That function called was console log, the button was pressed. Now, if you don't recognize this, this is just some ES6 syntax, which is really nice. It makes things look a lot cleaner compared to the traditional way of writing out your functions. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna have to do is applying a state. Now, the, we're gonna need to actually record what's being put into the, the text input so that we can say what to submit with the button later. So in order to do that, we'll scroll to the top of this and above our render method here, we wanna add a, well, we'll call this the state of, of the app at the moment. And we're gonna say term, and that represents our search term. Now this cool, great little thing called state is a React specific thing. Every time a state is changed and you change them by setting the state, this will re-render the entire component. Well, it will, yeah, it will re-render the component that has changed. So that's really cool because we need that to happen. Now, what I'm gonna focus on here is our text input. So we have our state there of term, which is empty. So let's just make sure that our text input is also empty. So we're gonna add a value attribute to it. And we're gonna set the value to this dot, okay, this is taking its time this dot state dot term and this dot state dot term return well it refers to this state and the term functionality so currently it will return that now the thing is if we start typing into our into our little project here with that it's going to keep going back to term because every time you type it's going to be like nope the value has got to be this dot state dot term and it's just going to keep reverting to that text there. So what we want to do now is add another property slash attribute to our text input. And we're gonna call it on change text. Now this is built into the text input. Ah, I've spelled this wrong again. My keyboard is just being so weird today. So this is built into the text input element or component. And what we wanna do here is we're going to accept the term, which is the current thing being typed into the text input. And we want to set the state. So it's this dot set state. Why is my computer lagging today? So basically what we want to do is we go this dot set state. So we're setting the state of this full app component. And we want to set the specific state of term. And we want to set state to term. Now another nice thing about ES6 is if you have the key and the value named the same variable, you can just say, remove that. And this basically means the same thing. So that is equal to term, well, term is literally the same as term, term. But yeah, I think you get the point here. It's quite a basic thing. It's similar to this deconstructing stuff we're doing here. It's just another little shortcut thing and makes your code look a lot cleaner. I mean, look how cute that little input is there. So one final thing I wanna do is, there's a reason we're setting the state because we want to know what the state is when the button is pushed. So now instead of console logging the button was pressed, we can log this.state.term. And this way we can go back to our app and check what happens now. Right, here we are at our working little example so far of what the code we've written is. And uh, off camera, I just wanted to test it quickly. So there's that console log test there. So ignore that when you see that now. So just to show you that this works, we can type in Barry. Uh, that's just straight up my name. And um, as you notice, it lets us change it without it breaking things because we have that ability to change things now. So the state has been changed. Every time you type something, the state changes. So I oh, can't even spell my name again. And notice this, when we click search, it says Barry Michael. And uh, we can change the state more to Doyle and we click search again. And this prints out the current state and the current state is Barry Michael Doyle. So it's just nice to know that everything 
is being kept the same. So if the text input's showing one thing, you know that's the same thing all over the place, which is really great. Uh, currently, this is taking its time to lag around and not do the right thing. But yeah, that's just my computer acting really slow, running an emulator and everything at once and recording everything. So that's going to cut it for the video today, guys. Uh, the next video, we will talk about splitting up these things because now we have this header and we have this this whole search bar thing. It would be nice if we can split these up and put them in their own components because otherwise everything is going to get a bit messy. So these styles, they only apply to the search components. So why not put it all into their own components? We'll tackle that in the next episode. Anyway, guys. Thank you very much for checking out this video and uh, if you enjoyed it please like and subscribe it really helps me out and yes leave comments guys it really helps me judge on if i'm going too fast if i need to explain more your comments are much appreciated anyway guys i'll check you later ciao